Ever since Unai Emery took over Aston Villa, their form has changed drastically. Even so, ever since Unai Emery took over Aston Villa, no other team has picked up more wins and no other team has picked up more points other than Arsenal. And today, we're going to find out exactly how and why. Today we are going to focus on Villa's impressive 3-0 win over Newcastle. Newcastle being a very, very good team this season. Now this was one of the most impressive Villa performances, if not the most impressive back on 15th of April 2023. But today, or for this match, he went 4-4-2-3-1, which worked very, very well. It was very effective and it overloaded Newcastle's midfield three, which allowed um, Aston Villa to take total control of the game as their 4-2-3-1 was a bit more more narrow than the 43 ones that we know of. So if we do look at the details of the game and look at the match stats, Aston Villa had 16 shots in this game, 17 corners, which sometimes doesn't really mean anything, but we can see, and if many of us watch the game, the pressure that Villa put on Newcastle was impressive. So 37% of their shots were on target, six on target, six off target, of course, some being blocked as well. Villa hit the woodwork two times in that game. If that was me on Football Manager, I'll be absolutely losing my head and they also missed two big chances so the scoreline suggests it could have been even bigger than the 3-0 win but we do have a tactical analysis written by Mohamed Zidane and I'm going to read some of this to find out exactly how Aston Villa managed to control Newcastle in a way that many teams haven't been able to against Newcastle. So I already mentioned how effective Aston Villa were controlling in the middle of the park and that was more so because of Newcastle's shape as well. They did press in a 4-3-3 with a good goalkeeper with the ball it was easy to attract one of the wingers to find a fullback behind him. Below you can see once Murphy Murphy has taken a few steps forward. They found Moreno, the left back for Aston Villa, behind him. Moreno then found his narrow winger, Ramsey, dragging Trippier, the right back, with him. So now we can see how narrow Ramsey was able to come inside. And then we can see the big space that is left in um, Newcastle's back line. With a combination play between the winger and the fullback, ended with a cross from Moreno. This was the first threat against Newcastle's goal, but without a real danger so far. Four minutes later, with a much lower defense, line, Villa's centre-backs tried to provoke the pressure. In this situation, it was Willock, the central midfielder, who jumped the press to centre-backs, leaving his man, Douglas Luiz, one of the pivots for Villa, free. This forced Bruno Gomeres, the number six, to take a few steps forward to Douglas Luiz, leaving Buendia behind him. After Buendia laid off the ball to Dendonka, who passed the ball to McGinn on the wing, the ball was then crossed to Watkins, resulting in the first goal from Ramsey after he found the ball that Watkins set up in the box. So here is the pressing shape from Newcastle. It's a 4-3-3, which leaves the number six free to be able to cover and also to slot in the back, um, the back line if needed. However, Aston Villa was able to disrupt the scheme using their winger, Ramsey. Below, we can see how Ramsey dropped back and attracted Joel Linton to him, forcing Bruno Gomeres to jump and press Douglas Luiz. And they found Ashley Young on the other side easily after they took away the advantage of the extra player in front of the defence. So it was all about moving Newcastle, especially the number six, making him no longer that free number six. Now they can attack the back line with the winger and the number 10 easier than before. Newcastle defenders recovered the ball. However, the villains quickly regained it and shifted it right away to the other side to Moreno, who managed to put in a couple of crosses into the box. In the second half, we saw no less good ideas. Newcastle tried to press Villa centre-backs using Murphy, the right winger, to jump up, leaving the fullback behind him to be pressed by Trippier. Buendia attracted Bruno Gomeres to him at the other side of the pitch, allowing Ramsey to receive the ball without pressure. So here is Ramsey in the middle of the park receiving without pressure, but also notice as well how narrow he's looking, which is very important when we do go into football manager. After receiving the ball, Ramsey passed it to the left back Moreno, who found Watkins as a runner behind Newcastle's defensive line, leading to a serious attack. Again, Watkins on the shoulder of the Newcastle defenders is very important information for our football manager tactic. By the time Eddie Howe decided to bring Wilson and Amarin on, they turned into a 4-4-2 with two strikers, Isak and Wilson, which left them a little bit open as Eddie Howe said. And after the six, then Don Carr received behind the strikers, he found the number 10, Buendia, free. Again, the central players 
finding spaces in between Newcastle's line. So remember, we saw this before. Yes, exactly the first goal. After Buendia received it, McGinn, the right winger, started to run diagonally with Moreno and Watkins running forward. Buendia passed it to McGinn, who dribbled, then passed the ball to Moreno, who crossed it to Wilkins, scoring the second goal. And then Moreno received and crossed the ball to Watkins, who scored the second goal. In conclusion, Unai Emery has demonstrated his mastery of tactical patterns and strategies in his recent matches against top Premier League teams like Newcastle United. By analysing the strengths and weaknesses of his opponents and implementing well-coached patterns and game plans, Emery was able to bypass the formidable defence of Newcastle and secure a crucial victory for his team team. As I said before as well, the football manager tactic is going to be purely based off this performance against Newcastle and what we are going to do is get stuck right into it. In Football Manager, we did decide to test it with two teams, one being Aston Villa, the other being AS Monaco in France for, to be honest, no particular reason. So there are going to be slight different variations of this tactic as well. Again, I always do this. So when you do download this tactic, there's going to be kind of four tactics that you can pick from. And some of them are going to be tweaks that you can make in game as well. For example, if you need to grab a goal or if you need to absolutely kill the game and hang on to the result, like I had to do with Aston Villa a few times in the English Premier Division we did finish fourth which is very good we did overperform of course in the friendly cup I mean we don't care about that we played two friendly cups by the way in the English FA Cup we got knocked out in the fifth round by Liverpool and in the Carabao Cup we got knocked out in the third round disappointedly by Queen's Park Rangers but as most of you know I do like to heavy rotate my teams in the cup games so we did score the fourth most goals in the Premier League with 67 and we had the fifth most shots for the fifth fewest shots against which is fairly impressive for Aston Villa when it comes to pass completion and most possession I mean we're not in the top eight but we don't necessarily care about that but most impressively when it comes to clean sheets we have the most clean sheets and we also have the fewest conceded in the English Premier Division now this tactic is also heavily focused around Oli Watkins so it was good to know that he come third with the top goal scorer Ivan Tony coming in second and Haaland scoring 45 goals Buendia with 12 assists Thiago Almada with 11 now I did say Tiago Omada halfway through the season if most of you or if any of you are following me on Twitter then most of you sorry would have seen that I've posted a lot of updates on Twitter so many of you people would have seen that I signed um, Tiago Omada because at January we was actually on top of the league and I needed to sign someone with quality I knew the results were going to drop off but I needed someone with quality to help us get over the line and definitely qualify for Europe which is one reason why I signed Tiago Omada. Oli Watkins had the second most shots for Buendia was joined second with the most man of the match awards with seven most key passes no one there most tackles dribbles no we got Alex Moreno with the dribbles 136 most clean, uh, most clean sheets of course being Emiliano Martinez with Monaco though the results were slightly better I say slightly better they were kind of a lot better but we were AS Monaco with slightly better players but also the competition in league earn compared to the um the quality of the Monaco squad I mean it's going to be different when you compare it with Aston Villa and the Premier League but in league in. we did score the second most goals we had the second most shots for again defensively we were very strong we had the fewest conceded and the fewest shots against us looking at the top goal scorers Ben Yedder remember the main focus of the tactic is actually around the striker so getting your striker to score is going to be very important Golovin with the most assists Ben Yedder with the most shots but Golovin is also there with the most key passes as well most tackles won Golovin is there with 106 now that is a big big surprise when it comes to fewest conceded new bell is second and new bell is also second with the clean sheets as well So for the tactic in Football Manager, this is exactly how I set up the formation in FM, my Unai Emery 4-2-3-1. We of course have a back four, a double pivot here, but we have three attacking midfielders rather than uh, an attacking midfielder, then two wingers on either flank. And then lastly up top, we do have that poacher, Oli 
Watkins. So in goal, we do have the Martinez, roll the sweeper keeper. I just have tackle harder there. It's mostly by default. And then the left back will be Alex Moreno on attack, getting further forward, staying wider, but also putting crosses into the box, which was very important against Newcastle. On the right hand side, we kind of have that Ashley Young role where he's a right back, he supports play, but he doesn't get obviously as far ahead as Alex Moreno, especially when it comes to the starting position. He does get further forward when the opportunity is is on but we're not trying to force that attacking movement from Ashley Young so we do have hold position but we also have stay wider now the two center backs we have a ball playing defender on stopper with dribble less this will be Tyrone Mings of course and then we have his center back partner the central defender taking fewer risk making sure he keeps possession of the ball we want to control the game sometimes but also Mark Titer this is something that I just found in football manager that hurt um that helps work better does that make sense now moving into midfield the Dundonka role in a Newcastle match for me I put it down as a defensive midfielder now actually it could be a defensive midfielder on defend or support kind of down to you but in football manager the balance worked better when he was on support but he does have hold position at sort of as a defensive midfielder on defend holding his position not roaming around or trying to swap with anyone just holding his position in the midfield and then he is supported by the Segundo Volante Douglas Luiz getting further forward more so that sort of box-to-box -box midfielder he can get further forward make late runs on the edge of the box and he can also help out defensively as well and then now moving into the attacking midfield on the right hand side John McGinn we have run wide with the ball he's going to get the ball and then try to run wide stretch the opponent defenders as well close down more but ease of tackle so he's going to press more especially in those wider areas which is very important as we have no winger there he's not going to get stuck in and get beat too easily he's just going to stay on his feet and cut off the passing lanes on the left hand side we have the ramsey role taking more risk more of the adventurous one out of the two taking more risk getting further forward closing down more again ease of tackles the buendia role someone that can drop deep into midfield operating those wider areas and also link up with the striker i went with emmy buendia's role as a advanced playmaker and he has no added instructions lastly we do have a poacher for ollie watkins but there is a reason why of course we went with the poacher now after the game against newcastle watkins himself said before maybe i was running into the channels and into the corners and doing a lot of work for the team something similar to advanced forward running into the channels and working hard for the team so i'm pressing forward on attack or an advance forward now i'm staying within the width of the box and timing my runs i work on specific movements during the week and try and replicate that in the game when the players get the ball i know what to do i stay patient even if i'm not getting the ball because it only takes one moment to drop and you've got to take it it's about having a clear mindset and being ready when the opportunity comes a high volume shooter watkins is not wasteful with his efforts hitting the target with 69.9 percent of his shots so as we see, Watkins doesn't move into the channels that already eliminates advanced forward and pressing forward, but he's also a high volume shooter with a poacher when he's in and around that box. He is, of course, going to shoot more often. So that there wraps up my player roles. Now for the team instructions, we are going to pass the ball into the space is going to encourage some forward runs, but also we can kind of get the ball into the space that is what uh villa done very well against newcastle worked the space and got the ball into the space the passing directness we are using shorter now originally when i created it i left it on standard with the tempo on slightly higher but i did lose control in a lot of the game so just generally it works better in football manager just to have the shorter passing which doesn't totally eliminate the more direct passes and then in the final third as well i've got low crosses which is to uh, sort of encourage more cutbacks especially into Watkins in transition when the possession has been lost we're not going to be using counter press or regroup now Emery's teams can actually counter press well but it's more in moments during the game rather than an instruction that started off from uh, minute zero to minute 90 so his teams can counter press well you can choose to add this if you want I didn't use it at all but in real life during games Aston Villa can counter press extremely well when possession has been one Aston Villa will then counter press get bodies forward and try and take advantage on the counter attack and for Aston Villa we are taking long kicks but at Monaco of course it was slightly different the build up at Monaco would have been slightly different to gain more control but of course we couldn't just keep kicking the ball forward to Ben Yedder so that is the um, distribution type for the Emery tactic at Monaco you 
you could change it or I changed it to short kicks distribute to the fullbacks or the center backs depending on the opposition's formation lastly out of possession I have gone for a high press now remember this is based off the Newcastle game and not necessarily saying that Emery is a high pressing um, manager and this is what he does consistently in all the games it is more focused on the Newcastle game as for me that was one of the most impressive if not the most impressive Villa performance so far this season so for the trigger press it is going to be on more often we are going to prevent the short goalkeeper distribution we are going to drop off more as well in moments we are going to drop deeper during the games and the cross engagement we're actually going to stop the crosses a tweak that i find in full manager that helped with this formation so now if i load up the original as you can see i've got quite a few here if i load up the original and i load it you're gonna see it's going to be the exact same and this is the version that you guys will be able to download now there are different versions of this tactic of course the monaco tactic the defensive midfielder is no longer a defensive midfielder on support he's now a register and of course like i mentioned before as well um the goalkeeper distribution has slightly changed he is now taking short kicks now what to do when you are playing tough games away from home things have slightly changed the advanced playmaker is now a shadow striker someone slightly more direct in his play in defensive midfield now we do have a ball winning midfielder on the then looking to stop the opposition and also um in possession the passing directness has changed the standard the tempo now is on higher out of possession we have dropped now into a mid block and if we need to absolutely kill the game the fullback now is on fullback defend we are slowing the pace down wasting time sometimes being more disciplined slowing the pace down as well staying on our feet not giving away any silly free kicks in the dying moments of the game and that there wraps up the tactic so you can see that how i used it i would have it in three slots so i wouldn't use this one i would use the aston villa one at aston villa of course i would use this for majority of the games especially at home tough away games now that was anyone that is predicted to finish above me away from home this is what i used and then lastly to, just to kill the game to kill results i then use the rdf kill it I of course have some gameplay for you. Of course I have, um, I recorded some of this gameplay for uh, Twitter updates as well. Make sure you are following me on Twitter to catch any updates when I'm creating a tactic. Also, you might as well just subscribe while you're here, leave a comment, like this video, all of that good stuff, all of that good stuff. So here is against Brentford. The Brentford right back is currently on the ball. He's breaking forward. Moreno intercepts, plays it to Mings. Here's McGinn into Jacob Ramsey, Douglas Louise. Here's McGinn currently at left back. Now, this is what I like as well about the tactic at times is the rotations and the filling ins. So you can see Moreno is gone. So McGinn actually decides, let me just chill at left back and take that position so we are currently still in a 4-2-3-1 but players have just changed their positions McGinn's now at left back Moreno is now a left winger Jacob Ramsey is now the central but uh attacking midfielder and Buendia is slightly on the right hand side so head McGinn plays it over the top to Moreno he gets the ball into the box Watkins very similar to the goals against Newcastle again against Brentford has no guard on the ball he's going to play it back to Janssen yeah now is Janssen now struggling we forced them wide now and then as soon as we forced them wide we have now got them in a trap Rosalev now the right back it's two versus one against him well of course going to win this ball McGinn wins the ball back plays it to Luis Luis to Ramsey ah oh, and is lucky their camera to Watkins on the shoulder and banging goal now against Palace the goalkeeper's gone long Mins intercepts plays it back to Martinez he plays it to Consa here we go here's camera camera back to to Monza. Monza <laughs> concert to Mings has Jacob Ramsey lovely free ball into Watkins he was on the shoulder and a lovely finish now we are Forest away bit of an easy game has Mings oh no disrespect to Forest Mings to camera camera to Buendia look at the spaces in midfield the attacking midfielders are just ripping this is what I like about the tactic as well sometimes the AI just cannot control the movements of the attacking midfielder they don't know which one to pick up so here's Buendia he's just completely free Buendia's picked up the ball but as soon as he does look at Ramsey goal he's attack this space now as the left back has just completely left it free similar to what we saw against Newcastle again when one attack midfielder comes it just leaves kind of an area free and in the analysis we saw Moreno attack that this time it's Ramsey attacking it and then smashes it into the net and lastly me beating Newcastle 5-1 which was an absolute pleasure to do of course I've saved this game so we can actually watch it in Football Manager 
So we are going to watch the goals. So the first goal, we actually saw some nice build up. Here's Douglas Luiz back to Mings. Moreno on the left side. Douglas Luiz to Camara. Ramsey, Coutinho, Moreno. Plays it back to Luiz. Luiz going to bring it forward slightly to Ramsey. And what a pass into Buen Dia. The next goal is a penalty. Coutinho buries that. <laughs> and then the third goal, Mings intercepts that. We're actually just going to go back slightly again, just so we can see sort of the positioning. Here's Trippier on the uh, flank, and he's going to run out of options as well because we've trapped them successfully. Mings intercepts, plays it to camera. The quickness of that attack there was lightning speed, and we see Watkins burying the opportunity. That was actually a very good combination play between Watkins and Buendia, and a lovely finish. The next goal, Joel Linton on the ball, plays it out wide. Oh, this is a Newcastle goal, of course, yeah, whatever. Good goal, actually, good goal. So here comes another Villa goal. We're going to round it back slightly. Moreno taking a throw in, plays it to Ramsey. Ramsey back to Moreno, Luis, Camara, Buendia, fine space, and what a banging goal. And lastly, the last goal comes from a corner, whips it in far post, Mings 5-1. One. Unfortunately, though, that wraps up today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Many of you couldn't wait for this tactic to come out, and it's finally here. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget, my name is RDF. If you have liked this video, make sure you like this video, leave a comment, and also subscribe to the channel. That helps out a lot. Shout out to my Patreons. If you want to support the channel, it goes a long way. So check out the Patreon in the description below, and I'll see you guys very soon. Stay safe, and God bless.